cars going round and round, and I was with the presence of a male angel on my right and a female angel on my left. As far as I knew, uh, she stayed silent. Um, later, I discovered their names. And that's for a little bit later. But he said to me, this is a bad enough accident that if you want to go, you can go. This was 2002. I just, in that moment, um, as I saw two chandeliers in the sky, because I shot out of my body as a soul, I just didn't want to feel the pain. Um, I saw a yes and a no. And it was like a nanosecond to make this decision. And I thought, I'm just going to have to stay because, yes, I had rage and terror in the moment of the accident and the car spinning. But I also felt that I hadn't done my life. I'm here today with Katiyun Alyosha. She is a near-death experiencer with gifts in channeling, mediumship, and the Claire's. Katiyun, I am so excited to be here with you today. You have a special place in my heart, actually. So I'm really happy to have you here to share your story with my audience. Thank you. Thank you, Tia, for having me on your beautiful show. And it's a delight to be with you in person over Zoom again. And I am just absolutely honored. Thank you. I feel the energy has been this beautiful magnetic loop since we met. So I feel very, very blessed to be here. Thank you. Oh, hi, everyone. Same. <laughs> same here, definitely. We we have a an energetic connection for sure. So it's a blessing to know you. If you wanna go ahead and tell my viewers uh, what happened to kind of get you on this spiritual journey. I would love to share what happened. Um, in 2002, I had what I feel was my last NDE. I was at a writer's workshop in Squaw Valley in California, and I, I ended up um, in a um, very, it was a cataclysmic uh, head-on collision with two vehicles. There was a gentleman who uh, just, I think he'd played golf and he had had perhaps something to drink and he crossed over the double yellow line of the freeway. And it was just one lane going, one lane coming on um, Highway 89 there. And I was the head of my car lane and he was the head of his. We were almost past each other when he just veered into me. And um, basically, we were both going 55 miles an hour. Uh, he tore through my car cabin. He came from the left side, of course. And um, as the cars were spinning, I had a uh, thought that was directly from my third eye. And the thought was, you're not going to kill me because it had by then sunk in that that's what in fact was happening. Um, because I tried to veer to the right the second I, we were almost past each other, as I say, and I tried to go to the right. I, I couldn't maneuver my Volvo station wagon fast enough. And so we collided and, and then as the car was spinning and I could feel the heat from the floorboard and I could smell, um, you know, rubber cars going round and round. And I was with the presence of a male angel on my right and a female angel on my left. As far as I knew, uh, she stayed silent. Um, later, I discovered their names. That's for a little bit later. But he said to me, this is a bad enough accident that if you want to go, you can go. This was 2002. I just, in that moment, um, as I saw two chandeliers in the sky, because I shot out of my body as a, a soul, I just didn't want to feel the pain. Um, I saw a yes and a no, and it was like a nanosecond to make this decision. And I thought, I'm just going to have to stay because, yes, I had rage and terror in the moment of the accident and the car spinning. But I also 
felt that I hadn't done my life. I hadn't, I had just done what family recommended and strongly urged, <laughs> shall we say, at times. And I hadn't done my life. So I stayed. I was given a choice to stay. Um, that was a huge, huge portal that opened to me at that moment. Um, now, of course, you know, with, for instance, the gentleman who hit me, hit the car behind me, once he went through my car, I mean, literally like butter, I think, because when I saw the insurance accident um, photos about a year later, he had taken the second door off the Bogo station wagon entirely. And there is a part of my brain that really still wants to minimize and kind of blips out. Uh, I stayed conscious the whole time, but I did some journeys last year and discovered that in fact, it was um, a pretty bad accident. It wasn't just something mild. And he hit the car behind me and then that gentleman hit me. And by the time all the cars stopped moving, my car was perpendicular to a tiny bit of guardrail over the Truckee River. So again, saved in so many different ways. And I was in clairvoyance school, which in that time, you know, no one ever said they were in clairvoyance school. You had to, to be more palatable. You had to say, I was going to meditation class, uh, you know, and that people were okay with here in the Bay Area. But to say you were actually in psychic school was like, oh my gosh. So I um, had a premonition the day before the accident and I had called in to the school and said, I would love to be put in the women's healing line for a spiritual sort of tune-up because I just felt something really dark coming. And in fact, when I journeyed last year, all these years later, um, I saw that there were, there were dark entities attached to that accident. And um, in the years since I have studied human design and I'm a five one and I have a certain predisposition to seeing things I'm told. Um, I have a passive brain system and body system. So I'm to the right in human design lingo. And they said that you are actually designed to see angels and you're also designed to see the other side, demons. And, it, you know, then what that means is I can see what's driving people, demons, that's what I mean. But also, personally, I can see them. <laughs> I can see when someone's carrying a lot of, you know, baggage. And I came out of the accident, I healed physically, I was trying to heal, and I went back to clairvoyant school and got some feedback on what had happened. But it was interesting. No one really wanted to talk to me about angels, even though I kept saying there were angels in the car. And in my journey last year, I discovered there were actually more angels in the back seat of the car that I had not noticed um, in all the tumult of the, of the actual accident. So, um, and I apologize if things are a little here or there. I, my brain is a little bit, as my, one of my teachers, mentors says, um, neuro spicy. <laughs> That's what he calls it. But I'm, I'm a little bit neurodivergent, which it's, uh, it's a blessing and also a little bit jumping here or there. So I hope that I'm tracking okay for your viewers, Tia. You're doing a great job. Thanks. Um, so I tried for many years to keep the clairvoyant school hands-on healing program. I did the advanced uh, clairvoyant program at that school. I kept it sort of on the down low because I didn't really want people to know what I was up to. It didn't feel safe. And um, when I tried to talk about angels, um, sometimes people were very receptive, but often I felt it just wasn't the time or the place for it. And so I just felt like this experience, which to me felt like in so many ways falling into a fairy book, like a fairy story, um, even though, even though it was so 
harsh and grueling in the physical aspects, the fact that these amazing beings were there and I was, they were communicating with me in a kind of a beaming way, not really through words, but just in a, um, was, was very profound to me. And yet I was also in my body exhibiting symptoms of CPTSD. So I sought very good care and I went to see a wonderful local therapist who actually was working with Peter Levine at the time who wrote Waking the Tiger, which is an amazing resource for trauma. And his work um, helped a great deal at that time. And we did a lot of um, somatic healing as well. And I remember at one point um, realizing, you know, it's almost like you have to make a decision whether what happened to you was really trauma and something horrible or whether you were gifted something, a glimpse into something that most people may not be so aware of in their, in their daily lives, in our daily lives. I certainly wasn't. And then in the course of the, of working with my fabulous therapist, um, Maggie at the time, I realized that this voice that I was so obsessed with from my accident his the angel's voice that sort of became the voice of the accident for me i had actually heard this voice a few years earlier when i was uh, hospitalized after going to the middle east where i was born with my mom for a trip a short trip and came back incredibly ill with i think um hepatitis from the food and water and things and uh and something else they could never diagnose. But anyway, I was put in the isolation ward for about five days in the hospital. And the first night, because I had a really swollen um, lymph nodes and it was in a tremendous amount of pain with a fever um, breaking 104, things like that for a few days. I stunk so my feet would bring the fever down, then it would shoot back up. I mean, it was just... In the hospital, they had given me Demerol and all the visitors were, in, were told they had to wear the mask because it was the isolation ward. And they left me in the room that night and everyone left finally. And I was sinking into sleep. And I heard, you must help a lot of people. And I thought, wait, I opened my eyes, looked around, no one's there. I'm thinking, <laughs> who is this? And I... I think I shut my eyes again. I don't remember. This was in 1994, November of 94, Thanksgiving week. And he said it again. No, no body, just a disembodied voice. And it wasn't an edict. It was more like a prediction. And uh, I went to sleep. I tried to share a little bit with friends who came that week and were so kind to visit and we played board games what well, they did on the other bed and I was over on my side. And I said, you know, guys, I think I'm supposed to like maybe help people. And I remember they were so sweet and they turned and said, um, oh God, no, you know, you've helped us so much. Just go back to sleep. And I, I remember pointing out the window and I was like, no, 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 not you people, like people, people. And they were just like, just go to sleep. So I forgot. I forgot the whole thing and just buried it sort of in daily conditioning, daily living. And then um, more and more, I'm a perpetual student. I just kept studying various modalities of shamanism and um just anything any anything and everything i tried emdr uh for trauma release um i was really doing pretty well in a lot of ways but there was still something in my system that was a blockage and i really wanted to get to the bottom of that and when my adored therapist retired not Maggie another lady because Maggie was very specific to you know intense accidents and traumas and things like that but someone I'd been working with um EMDR and hypnotherapy and things like that uh she basically retired and I ended up having to 
confront this thing within my own system. So I did a series of assisted journeys uh, last year and one this year. And once I got to the root of certain repressed childhood memories, Tia, is when the gifts fully came on bloom for me. And I am just so grateful to the medicine, to the people that help facilitate it, and to just my guides and angels, because then I could really see them. And and since I have, you know, spoken to my human design coach and other allies on the path, you know, comrades on the path, friends on the path, and they have said, oh, gosh, you know, you, you're designed to see these sorts of beings um, for whatever reason. I... I have that uh, ability. So I'm just grateful to be here and be able to speak a bit about it. And uh, really, I just want people to feel that we are, no, I don't want people to feel any particular way. I just want to share that I discovered um, something that maybe everyone knew, but I didn't, which is that we are eternal beings. And um, that just makes me so happy <laughs> to just share that. And recently I was speaking to someone, I asked her how she is so wonderful at the massage work she does. And she said, I just keep telling myself, I am the light, I am the light. And um, I thought it was beautiful. And I thought after I left, I journaled, I said, you know what I tell myself is I say, I am space. So that's how I approach it now, is that way. And I try to come to it as um, quietly and softly as I can. And usually things just are right there and access is granted somehow by some miracle. I don't know how these things work, Tia. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. I think I think all the wonderful near-deathers that I'm friends with and connected with, we all feel like it's, it's a mystery. No one knows, you know, how exactly, but we all come to it from different angles and we're given opportunities to try to share what happens. So I'm doubly grateful to you for letting me share my story. I am so grateful to you for sharing your story because it was stories like yours that helped me to start healing and stories like yours that help so many others heal as well or diminish their fear of death, even just a little. So the work that you're doing just by sharing is so important, but you have so many other gifts that you're giving back to the world as well. So, so much good coming from you. Thank you for everything that you do. And I love that your message is that we are eternal beings because that is my favorite saying that we are eternal spiritual beings. We're never gonna die that you know there's nothing to fear and that we can live our lives in a better way if we don't if we're not so afraid of death or afraid of you know being punished or something like that after death yes yes and you know again i certainly in the moment where um the gentleman was coming across the freeway i certainly had intense fear and i mean it was terror i mean i can't you know, I can't not say that. That's not the truth. I, I was deeply afraid of um, of dying in that moment. I was like, "What are you doing here?" And I and my logical brain took over and tried to suss out. Wait, I didn't hear a tire blow on his car. And what is he doing here? And why is his head in my lap? And you know, like, what? But um, but I am grateful that I was given the chance to sink deeper into my being and to go deeper and get into past lives and clean things up along the lines, timelines in my being, in my essence, um, and hopefully bring, bring a contribution to a time and space on our planet where we really, you know, I believe we all came for these times actually, these exact times. And I'm so excited because as I mentioned in 2002, 2001, when I started clairvoyance school, it was really hush hush. Um, now I'm, you know, after the, during the pandemic and after, my goodness, I mean, it's just so expanded. And I really, I'm in this wonderful uh, tarot and mysticism class online. And 
um, I remember my, I took a bit of a leap, a risk to do that because I had some cards for a little, for, you know, many years that I would just look at myself, but I didn't really, they weren't the traditional tarot cards and I didn't really know how to do the spreads fully. And I never really got into it because I had at the back of my mind, uh, my wonderful clairvoyant teacher saying, well, if you can see the energy, why would you need to see cards? You can just read the energy. So just read the energy. But in fact, I'm finding the cards are a lovely way to connect for people because they love the storybook aspect of it, of, of seeing the story unfold. And it's amazing how it dovetails the energy, uh, the transmissions, the downloads that I um, am able to tap into. And then the cards can be very powerful and very healing for people. So um yeah, I'm just really, I feel really blessed to be in this field where so many are now also. And when I'm painting in my studio, a lot of times I'll just have on the background, either someone who's doing interviews like you are, which is fantastic and just uplifting and opens my soul up to like this oh, kind of, you know, frequency, or um, people are, you know, doing various readings and things. And I'm tapped into that to just keep, keep my hand in the ethers, you know, um, when when my guides allow me to do that so yeah cat were you born into a religious family well I, it's interesting i was born in tehran uh into an iranian family and um when i was growing up we had we were very secular in iran at that time and when i i remember when i would go to school on the school bus for instance they had pictures of the shah and in our textbooks we had pictures of the shah so we had a king we were we were a monarchy we had it was a kingdom you know and we um then had uh in my particular family um people who were very observant in terms of prayers and things my great grandparents um a few of my grandparents but it was more like a nod to uh I don't I don't want to use the word hygiene but it was almost like oh this is just something I do like I brush my teeth and I pray and I you know the, it wasn't so much it wasn't a fervor um at that time but certain family members did become very later on when we moved to California they became very um strong in their views and um it was actually hard to be around for me because I just am really for freedom and liberation at the end of the day so I just you know was like wait you're telling me this is you know and this is part of the deconditioning that I think my spirit at least sought um was to not see things as good or bad good or bad black or white but as much more open than that and many more possibilities and options for each of us. So I was always a little bit of a rebel, but my handwriting teacher tells me that kids with the K letter uh, as a first letter of their name are usually rebels. Um, and people with the letter T in their first name tend to be teachers uh, of, of different kinds. So that's, that's that. my uh, long and short of it. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Have your, uh, philosophies regarding like religion or spirituality um, changed as a result of your near-death experience? Oh, yes. I mean, it just opened my eyes to the vista that there is. And I realized that as much as I might try to see or someone might try to see or conceive, it's the, you know, the consciousness is boundless. And even when I think I'm seeing the full circle around me, I'm just seeing a sliver of it because I'm still seeing through my eyes, my perception. And that was an amazing part of what I discovered in the journeys as well last year is that, that we, you know, <clears throat> we hold to certain delusions without knowing that we're holding to them. And when the mask falls, then you can see what's truly there. And then you can make true decisions from your soul. 
and your heart and your form, your body, your design, not just your mind and what you think you should do, which honestly, it's really not that helpful a lot of the time um, to, in, a, in terms of guiding us through our lives with big decisions and things. So yes, the accident just opened these portals and I would say more than anything to me, it just feels like an energy frequency that is just eternally giving. And once you tap into it um, through these various accidents or, you know, ha happenstances, however people come to it in their own way, each of us uh, through the near deaths, I feel you just kind of get infused with something. And I don't know what that is. Um, exactly, but there's there's something that just happens for you, to you, um, that is amazing. So I, it's frequency. It's like it's like the frequency of um, eternity. You know, it's just that something opening. You see, oh my gosh, there's all these beings around us. And as my psychic teacher used to say, the air around you is not empty. You know, um, and you realize, yeah, there's a lot going on in this little, you know, living room or kitchen or home or office, car, wherever you are. Um, we're guided, I believe. Um, and, and this is why I believe it's so important, especially now, to have our own connection with ourselves and the God of our hearts. However, that looks to each person. I don't think it's the same for any two people really we come at we come at this this personal it's such a personal connection come at it in so many different ways but it's it's quite beautiful and i find uh, having a chance to integrate those deep dark shadows especially things that for instance in my case i had repressed forgotten and uh, it turned a blind eye to didn't want to see once that all came out in the open, oh my goodness, Tia, and then we were like off to the races because it takes a lot of energy, I think, in a, in a body to suppress things, even if you're not aware that you're suppressing them. And as one near death friend said to me recently, it's like, you've really taken off, you know, you're, you, you're putting on your roller skates and you're taking off. And so now it's uh, no more trying to be quote normal in my case. Um, and to fit in, I just, you know, if I see things and share things with people, it's if it is a contribution and a help to them, wonderful. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what I feel about your question. Did I answer it properly? Was it? You did. Yes. Thank you. And you, you've been liberated. You get to live your, your true self. And <clears throat> do you think this is the self you've been all along, or do you think that? Your near-death experience changed you? I think they were, what I see is they were pointing an arrow to this version, pretty much. Um, it's not to say that this this particular incarnation is where I'm going to stay, but um, for the rest of my life, but I'm, I'm just having such a good time right now. It's just such a rich time. I mean, I told my... Um, tarot intensive the first weekend we had together as a group that yeah gosh it was just so amazing it you know that phrase lightning strikes when people say like I was doing a reading for someone with the cards and then I was just getting downloaded messages for them people I had never met and the messages were so specific for them and I remember I was right here in my kitchen doing it and I thought oh my gosh, you know, this is like, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing in serving others in this way. And I felt like lightning strikes. It was like right in that moment of the cards and the messages dovetailing and people going, how did you know that? I'm like, I don't know. It's not me. It's not me. I swear to you, <laughs> I'm not that talented or gifted. It's not me. It's just allowing it to come through. And for me, I'm realizing that, you know, I'm quirky, I'm goofy, and I have a more, um, my coach would say, more elegant side to me, but I'm just 
a little mix of everything like we all are. And I'm just ex um, accepting that more and more that I'm a little, you know, a little offbeat. And that's, that's just how I roll. So that's been the liberation for me. Yeah. When you're giving a reading for others and their their dead loved ones come through with messages for them, how do you, do you see them clearly with your eyes or is it like in your mind? Tell me how that comes through for you. I can often see the beings, um, whether they are um, a, a beloved person who's departed or uh, a disem, you know, like a like a spirit, just a spirit that the person doesn't know that's in their space. I can see them. Um, in psychic school, we were taught the one I went to at the time um, that it was considered. I don't know where I, maybe we weren't taught this. Maybe I just picked this up that it was a little bit rude to read with your eyes open. So people, you know, psychics would often close their eyes and channel or see things um, with their eyes closed. And in the in the recent few years, I've just been boldly reading with my eyes open and seeing just seeing things, and it'll come to me. I'll see, th you know, people and things and beings and shapes, uh, entities that have shapes, but maybe not, you know, like a human body sort of a thing. And then um, I was watching a wonderful channel on YouTube, uh, a channeler, she's a medium, and she was channeling uh, some celebrities that she talks to, which is always fun to listen to. And then I thought, well, gosh, you know, I, I've never necessarily done that I've had a lot of dreams with famous painters actors coming through because my astral life is just a party my goodness but I thought oh let me let me try to channel so and so because she did come through a dream once and I did write a little poem and let's see where this goes and it was so exquisite and I actually could feel interaction with her um and I recorded it on my little iPhone, just the audio of what I was getting and words that we were exchanging, at least as my human design people would say, in my hallucination of it. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm just making this up like everybody else. I'm not saying this is God's truth, but my experience was she was there. I was connecting with her and uh, it was exquisite. And it ended when it needed to end. And there were very powerful messages. Um, I am someone who <clears throat> doesn't shy away from the darker aspects. So I won't just sugarcoat things and say, oh, everything is just fantastic all the time. I, I don't do that kind of bypassing. Um, where to me, it's not all like love and light. If something horrible is, is happening, it's it, there it is. There's something horrible happening. It needs to be addressed. And... Um, that, that I think, um, helps round things out so that if there's a bit of a guidance or advice, uh, I couch it in very soft terms, but it's, it's there too. It's not just only validation. There could also be like, oh, and then there's this energy as well. Um, because I feel people really want to know that. You know, I want to know that if I'm off in some way or if I'm if I could do better, I would love to know that. And not just because I have some a lot of planets in Virgo, but um, I, I do want to know uh, where things can be fine tuned a bit and refined. And you mentioned earlier about how in 2001, 2002, um, it was a different world and we things mm -hmm. like uh, clairvoyance or tarot cards were considered a little more woo-woo and now we're starting to see where they're becoming more accepted and more people are seeking out not only gifts for themselves but others who have gifts um their services and do you feel like that just as a whole the universe not the universe but um the planet itself is kind of rising in vibration do you think we're going into a new age i do i really feel it I feel it. I feel like I, myself, I feel like I lay dormant for a long time until I had healed enough and I had, um, and then this, the time and space was divinely guided to come out more. Um, I had not spoken about my NDE publicly until last year. So almost 20 years after the fact. Um, I do feel that we are a web of 
feels to me that, I mean, I really feel this now, that there are a lot of people holding up their own, uh, makes me teary a little bit, um, they're part of this web of light. And each person, you know, can just do what they can do and be of service in whatever ways they deem appropriate and beautiful. And that's, I think, what's happening is, you know, we're more concerned than ever, for instance, for the rights of women, children, animals. Animals are a huge passion of mine. Um, just, I mean, the consciousness is definitely raising and we're saying things are not okay that maybe before we would have been more silent about or just thought, well, that's just part of life. And now everyone to me, I feel is, or people in my circle, but I feel also globally, people are very interested in soul liberation and freedom. And this is, we came to live in these beautiful ways um, to really, to, to really live magnificently, each of us, all of us. So that's, that's what I see when I look out. That's my hope. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like we're here to help usher it in all of us, you know, and like you said, all of us came here to experience this. I believe that with all my heart, because it's an exciting time to be alive. We have kind of both ends of the spectrum where there's amazing, beautiful, spiritual things happening. And then there's the other side where there's like a lot of control and fear um, and they're kind of like clashing. And so I feel like we're fighting and rising up out of this and it's a beautiful time for sure. Uh, very interesting. Um, the gifts that you have, are these gifts that anyone can develop? I believe so, Tia, I believe so. I don't think, I think these are abilities and I think um, certain people might have more of a capacity, for instance, for being clairaudient where they can hear things. Uh, some people might be more in tune with their actual sight, so clair clairvoyance. Some might be very clairsentient. Um, it's just some can smell things and know things instantly about someone. I have a chiropractor who can do that. She's just really in touch with her sense of smell. And so people have all of this, but I, I really believe it's nurturing the gifts, the abilities. And um, I would say practicing, not in a faux enforced way, but taking these abilities out for a run all the time, like just getting really um, comfortable with them because they're fun. It's fun. It's it's different little superpowers. And um, once you start connecting with others who are like-minded, it's so beautiful to just kind of, you know, we can't do this alone. And you start to sort of pink off of each other. And then that's where the magic happens is it's just, it's just beautiful because we all have connections and timelines that intersect and I believe um, there's just a lot going on multidimensionally as well. So there's a lot that we can create and benefit and learn from each other and ways that we can change our lives or change the trajectories of things um, that we wish to influence. And it's, it's beautiful to see people using their abilities and their capacities and getting into life in a very juiced up way is delightful it's like coming alive you know instead of so so many children um I believe are you know at least when I was growing up were told oh you didn't see that or you would say oh I see this and, oh you're wrong that didn't happen or that being is not there or that dream mm, you know I mean there's so much um doubt cast and then we start doubting ourselves and our abilities whereas if there's encouragement we can see more and more and more. And it only happens with the presence of another to validate and confirm and give you that spiritual hello on, you're doing great, just keep going. And and like you say, it's boundless, literally. No one has cornered the market on any of this. <laughs> I mean, it'll just keep going. And so that's the beauty of it is once you get in tune with that frequency, it's kind of like Peter Pan, you can kind of fly anywhere. 
if my viewers wanted to reach out to you, do you do distance work? Do you work with people like readings on Zoom? I do. I work uh, with clients on Zoom all the time. I love it. Um, I tend to... I don't say I take the top up. I tend to go a lot of time, so I'm I'm a okay with that, and I hope people would be too. But I do, and I love it. It's it's very powerful. It's almost like we're in person, um, having a session. So yes. If my viewers wanted to reach out to you, if they have more questions about your experience or they needed a reading, how can they find you? I have a new website. It's called uh, aliosha.com. A as an apple. L is in love, I is in igloo, O is in Oscar, Y is in yellow, S is in Sam, H is in horse, A is in apple, aliosha.com. And that's the um, name that the angels gave me after my accident um, when I asked what my name was one day. They said it was Aliosha. So I'm very uh, excited to share that with everyone. And I have a new um, web developer, so I'm excited about that too, the, the new site. Oh. There's a lot of energy surrounding you during this interview because <laughs> the camera keeps freezing and every once in a while it'll break up um, with your voice. But I think that for the most part, it's been pretty good. Um, I think we can see your beautiful face most of the oh. time. So I think it's all right. Um, but you've asked such great questions, such sublime questions. I hope that I've been able to um, answer them in a way that speaks to people's hearts. Oh, yes, absolutely. I think this is going to be very beneficial for many people. And thank you for taking the time. Do, do you have any last words of wisdom for my viewers? Just love yourselves. That's really my last. Let's, you know, please love yourselves. However, that looks small things, big things. It's the it's the joy that that really is what we came for, I believe, and um, and just my deepest thanks for allowing me to speak with you, Tia, one of my favorite folks on the planet. And thank you, everyone, for listening and participating in our meeting today. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. You've been an absolute pleasure, and I've enjoyed this very much. Me too, Tia. Thank you. Angels be with you. Thank you for being here. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you being here and supporting my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing if you enjoy near-death experiences and other spiritually transformative stories. It helps the algorithm know that this information is useful and push it out to more people. And that's the goal to get as many people to know that we are eternal spiritual beings and that we never die. Our bodies might die, but our essence will never die. And I want people to live with less fear. Let's all spread the word, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that little notification bell so you get all the notifications when my videos post. Thank you for all of your support. I'm sending love to you.